I'd like to demonstrate the electron arrangement of a cobalt-3 ion surrounded by six carbonyl or carbon monoxide ligands. As you may recall, this is a strong field ligand. And so I'm going to first draw the electron arrangement according to the valence bond theory. So let's look at cobalt-3. And we're going to look at the 3D electrons. You should recall that cobalt-3 is a classic example of a D6 ion. What that means is these two electrons are unpaired and can be paired with these two electrons. So in certain cases, uh, the 3D will stay as is and there will be no uh, pairing energy involved. But in other cases, we were going to add energy to this and these two electrons would pair up with those two electrons. So let's see what happens with carbon monoxide as a ligand. So here is our 4s, here's our 4p, and here is our 4d. Since we have a strong field ligand, We're going to be able to add some energy, pairing energy, and what's going to happen is these two electrons are going to be caused to pair up with these two electrons. So we go from our ground state to an excited state. Again, this is because we have a strong field ligand. So what happens to the 3D, we have six electrons and they're all paired. And the 4S and 4P are hybridized with these two D orbitals and we end up with what's called an inner uh, d orbital complex. So when we hybridize I'm going to put a little star here for excited. We have our 3D electrons and then we have our six orbitals for the octahedral complex and that's going to be D2 S P3 and the electrons on this will all be from the ligand. And so what we have here is six sigma carbon monoxide bonds and remember this is a strong field ligand. I'd like to now look at this from a different perspective. I'd like to look at this from the perspective of crystal field theory. As you recall, in crystal field theory, the electrons of the ligand interact with the electrons 
and of course the orbitals on the 3D level in this case. And crystal field theory takes into account that interaction, whereas valence bond theory uh, doesn't really explain how, um, how this pairing occurs. So let's look at this from the perspective of crystal field theory. So here we have cobalt-3, and as you may recall, the d orbital, let's go looking back at the uh, pre-hybridized, before it's hybridized, this d orbital is going to be split because the interaction between these six ligands and these five orbitals is not equal. Two of the orbitals interact differently from three of the orbitals. So I want to draw that split for you now and it looks like this. There will be three orbitals of lower energy and again we're talking about the 3D here and there will be two orbitals of higher energy. This difference right there we call delta or crystal field splitting energy. And it is fairly great here because co uh, carbon monoxide is a strong field ligand. So there's great interaction causing a split, a bigger split. We name this, these two orbitals, we call those EG, and we call these two orbitals T, 2G. So that's the names of those sublevels that's been split. So this is the EG sublevel of 3D, and this is T2G. The T, the G, and the E come from German words, and it won't be helpful to give you those names right now. But you can see right here, we've got pairing. Now, if this were a weak field ligand, the EG orbitals would be closer together. Therefore, the energy to, to unpair these electrons would be sufficient to make a smaller jump. But because this jump is so big, the, the, the energy required to get these two electrons unpaired is very great. So, because of that distance, these two electrons, or I should say these four electrons, stay paired together. And that is how a strong field ligand works. We also need to label this as low spin. And one more thing to point out is that the valence bond and the crystal field they match each other. The electron arrangement um, agree.